Now, what's the most famous story with this guy, Balaam? Is Balaam good or bad? Actually, in the book of Numbers, was Balaam good or bad? In the book of Numbers, I want to suggest to you he's pretty good. Actually, he gives four oracles. Does Balaam prophesy from God four times exactly what God told him to prophesy? Yeah, he's good. But then some of you said, no, he's bad. And the answer is, Balaam is like the Judas of the Old Testament. Now, by the way, was Judas good or bad? They say, well, Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas was bad. But wait a minute, wait a minute. Before, before Judas turned bad, was Judas good? Did Jesus send the 12 apostles out? Was Judas one of those 12 apostles that Jesus sent out to do miracles and do in his name? In Matthew chapter 10, Judas is sent out and proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ and does miracles in the name of Jesus. Okay, Judas. By the way, when, do you remember when Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me? They all looked around. Did, they, did any of them suspect Judas? No. Okay. So what I'm saying is Judas was, you know, he was one of the 12 apostles. He turns bad. Balaam is very similar to that. He's good, and then he turns bad. Okay, so we're going to see that change in him. So he's going to be portrayed both as a saint and as a sinner. Now, in the Old Testament, he's largely portrayed as pretty good. In the book of Numbers, let me read you a couple statements that Balaam makes out of Numbers chapter 22. Numbers 22 to Numbers 24 is the Balaam section. Numbers 22, verse 8, says this. Balaam says, Spend the night here, Balaam said to them, and I will bring you back the answer the Lord gives me, or that Yahweh gives me. So he says, you spend the night here, and I will bring you back an answer the Lord gives me. Down to verse 13, he says this. The next morning, Balaam got up and sent to Balak, prince, the, to Balak's princes, go back to your own country. For the Lord has refused to let me go with you. The Lord, Jehovah, will not let me go with you. Is Balaam faithful to what God told him? Yes, he is. He won't go. What happens? Balak, the king of Moab, sends more guys, and they, they come out to him, and they said, and basically, Balaam, will you come down a second time and stuff? And Balaam comes this way in verse 18. I haven't got it here, but eight, verse 18 says this, 22, 18. Balaam answered, even if Balak gave me a palace filled with silver and gold, I cannot or could not do anything great or small to go beyond the commandment of Yahweh my God. Of Yahweh my God. Does, is Balaam a Yahweh worshiper? Is Balaam a Yahweh worshiper? Sure is. He says, I can't do that. For gold or for silver, I can't do that. Now, by the way, this sets up what will be the greatest tension in Balaam's life. This is the greatest tension. Money or do God's word? Money or proclaim God's word or go after the money? And that's going to be the tension that Balaam, uh, that Balaam feels, okay? Whether it's going to be the money or is he going to be faithful to God's word? And he will be faithful to God's word. For I'll give you four oracles that will go over the saying that. Now you say, wait a minute, but I thought Balaam was a bad guy. Yes, he is a bad guy. If you go over to Jude in the New Testament, verse 11, Balaam is listed with the great apostates of all time. Balaam was kind of viewed as the, uh, what would in America, would it be Benedict Arnold or um, who would we say would be a real bad dude in America, okay? Lee Harvey Oswald or somebody like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, somebody that's bad person, or Judas. Judas is a classic from the Bible. Balaam is listed with the Judas and the bad people. And the same thing in the book of Revelation. Balaam is viewed as a traitor. That, that's the word I want, traitor. That Balaam is viewed as a traitor, one who served God initially and then turned away. And so he's in the New Testament, he'll be a major bad guy. Now, did Balaam know God? Yes, he did. We've got a statement here, a clear statement, that Balaam says, Yahweh my God, and I will only say what Yahweh my God tells me. So he was, did know God. He was not Jewish, but he knew God. Now, what about his name? I love his name, Balaam. It means destroyer. Okay, so this guy comes down, his name means destroyer. Okay, it sounds like almost a 3D game on a computer or something, you know? It was a destroyer, and it's Balaam. Now, while I say his name is funny, Balaam, destroyer, 
do you realize that they have actually found this guy's name on a, on a stone, carved in a stone, from 800 BC, and it's got Balaam, and by the way, it's got, and the place is called Deir Allah, they found it, Deir Allah, which is in Jordan. By the way, isn't it interesting that the stuff with uh, Balaam takes place in Jordan? They've actually, at Deir Allah, they've actually found a, a, a marker with Balaam's name on it from 800 BC in Jordan. It was found in 1967, and it was translated first in 1976. I mean, is this fairly recent? Now, it's older than you guys are, but this is fairly recent. They, found, they actually found this Balaam thing. It dates from 800 BC. Now, check this out. This is, this is actually from, this is actually a quote from this, okay? And by the way, this apparently isn't on your PowerPoints. So I'll put it up uh, tomorrow morning, first thing after class. Here is from this, this marker. Here's what it says. The misfortunes of the book of Balaam, son of Beor. By the way, Balaam, son of Beor, is that, is that our Balaam? Yeah. If it just said Balaam, you know, there could be more than one Balaam and stuff. But when it says Balaam, son of Beor, that's our guy. A divine seer, is that exactly who he was? A divine seer was he. The gods came to him at night, and he beheld a vision in accordance with El's utterances. Utterance. They said to Balaam, son of Beor, and then it goes on to the rest of the thing we've got. Actually, it's about this long, and I just, the top of this, is this pretty incredible? that they actually have records of this Balaam. I mean, this isn't just fairy tale. In other words, this guy's got a talking donkey. This has obviously got to be a legend that was made up, right? Talking donkeys and stuff. Question, was the guy real? We've actually got on monuments now that the guy is carved in as real from 800 BC. So this is pretty incredible. You don't often, to be honest with you, this is really incredible. You don't often get uh, just a minor, actually, to be honest with you, Balaam's a minor character in the Bible. You don't get this kind of confirmation, rarely. And this is just spectacular. But by the way, you had to wait till 1967 for it to even be found and to be translated to 1976. So Balaam's major struggle is whether he's going to go with God's word or whether he's going to go with money. And uh, this, uh, this is going to be his tension. By the way, will this be some of our tensions at various points in life, whether you're going to go for money or whether you're going to serve the Lord? This is a big tension that a lot of us have felt. And um, yeah... Now, the donkey narrative. This is a classic passage, the donkey. Okay. Does anybody remember having the tension? God says, okay, Balaam, you can go with him. And then Balaam goes with him, and then all of a sudden this angel comes with this lightsaber sword that's ready to take off his head. And you say, wait a minute, God, I thought that he just said, God just said you could go, and then God tries to, like, kill him. And you say, what's with that? You know, God gives you permission. It's like a parent, you know, some, then he takes back his word or something. What's going on with that? I don't think so. I think what's going on is God said, Balaam, you can go, but what was the one condition? you got to say exactly what I tell you. What's Balaam probably figuring in his head? Uh, maybe I can make some money out of this. Like, maybe I don't have to, like, God told me to say this, but maybe I can say this other stuff, too, and make money, too, so I can do, have my cake and eat it, too, you know? And so Balaam, I think, is playing with these ideas, and God's going to stop him in his tracks to warn him again, you better say exactly what I tell you. And so I think the donkey narrative is in there to slow the story down, to warn Balaam, you better do what God says exactly. So what happens with the donkey? Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey. This is chapter 22, verse 21. And went with the princes of Moab. But God was angry when he went, and the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw, now there's a play on words here, Balaam is a prophet. What is a prophet called? A prophet is called exactly a seer, a roe, a seer. Who sees here? Does the seer see the angel or does a donkey see the angel? No, does the seer see the, the angel? The seer should see the angel, but who sees the angel? The donkey sees what the seer can't. Do you see the irony there? The seer can't see, but the donkey does see. Okay, there's a play on this word seer. Okay, but God was very angry when he went, and the angel stood in the road. And when the donkey saw the angel standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, she turned off the road into the field. Balaam beat her to get her back on the road. When the angel Lord stood in a narrow path between two vineyards, and by the way, vineyard walls, what do they make their walls out of? It's very like New England. What do they make the walls in New England out of? 
rocks, okay? So they make their walls out of rocks, and that's a problem. And so there's two, the vineyard, there's walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it, so he beat her again. Then the angel of the Lord moved on ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no room to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw, again, the donkey seeing the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, and he was angry and beat her with his staff. Then what happens? The seer can't see, but the donkey sees. What does the seer do? The seer speaks the word of God, right? The seer is a prophet, prophemi, speaks for God, okay? Who speaks here? Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and she said to Balaam, what have I done to make you beat me these three times? And Balaam answered and said, if I had a sword, now you get the irony of this. Balaam said, if I had a sword in my hand, who's got a sword in their hand? The angel standing in front of him. Balaam said, if I had a sword in my hand, I, I would kill you right now. Okay? Do you get the irony? This angel with the sword standing there. Balaam said, if I had a sword donkey, I'd kill you. The donkey said to Balaam, am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? The donkey starts reasoning with Balaam. Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. And then all of a sudden it breaks into the narrative. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. Now the seer can see. Now the Lord opened Balaam's eyes. He saw the angel Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn, and he bowed low and fell down his face. The angel of the Lord asked him, what, what question does the angel ask? This is beautiful. This, this is so ironic. There's so much irony here. It's just, the angel of the Lord asked him, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? That's the same question that the what? That the donkey asks. So the donkey says, why have you beaten me three times here? I saved your life, man. The angel says, hey, Balaam, why would you beat your donkey? By the way, does the angel care about the animals? Does God care about the animals? You need to look at the book of Deuteronomy sometimes. It's really interesting, God's care for animals and stuff. And here, the donkey's getting beaten. He says, the angel says, why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you, and your path is a reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away these three times. If, if she had not turned away, I certainly would have killed you by now. But I would have spared her. <laughs> Balaam said to the angel, whoops, I've sinned. And Balaam backs off and he says, okay, I will only do what God says here. And Balaam backs off when he sees this angel ready to lop off his head. Okay, so that's the story of the donkey. Can you see all the irony in there? By the way, is this a great, kids, is this a great story to tell the kids? Do kids like talking animals? Yeah. yeah, so this is a great story for kids and stuff. And it's, it's a great story for us too because he's telling them to be faithful and stuff. So the donkey sees more, actually goes... Sees, the donkey sees more than the seer, and then the donkey speaks better than the, than the prophet. And so Balaam, is the narrative slowed down, Balaam, don't go after money, be faithful to the Lord. Now,